Welcome back. <laughs> I say this a lot, I guess. It's kind of just the opening to a lot of my videos, but I am doing a review of Star Wars Episode 7 of Force, or The Force Awakens. And a lot of people, when this first came out, kind of didn't like it because it was a blue, like, basic step for step retelling of Episode 4. Where it, whereas, like, the opening was just like the attack on the uh, the ship and having Darth Vader enter and then murdering everyone and then kidnapping Poe who took the place of Princess Leia and then you have the cantina scene with uh, Han Solo you have Han Solo sacrificing himself to Kylo Ren as old Ben did for Vader and so on and so forth but I liked it. I thought that that's what the fandom wanted at the at the time it still kind of does because everyone's like oh this isn't Star Wars this isn't what it is. So then we get something like this, that is pretty much the retelling of the same story, the same format, just retelling it in a new way, and almost everybody was up in arms because of this, and I don't see why. Um, it was a good movie, it was a fun movie, it established some new characters that we've never seen before, we've never heard about, except for Han, Chewie, 3PO, those type of characters, and... Harrison Ford finally got his death for uh, Han Solo. After so long of wanting it, he finally got it. And it was a heart-wrenching scene. And it was a scene that if you watch it closely, even if you've, like, first time seeing it, you should have seen it coming. Not necessarily from the dialogue, but from the lighting. You can see that uh, uh, Ben, Kylo Ren, uh, was saying, he was like, I'm feeling torn, I'm feeling conflicted, uh, and stuff like that. And you see the lighting, you see the red, and you see the kind of a like blue tint to it. And then you see when Ray and Poe, well not Ray and Poe, but uh, Ray and Finn burst through those doorways and watch what happened on stage. You see a, a little glimpse of light, like light trying to break in through the darkness, which was Han Solo trying to break into the, or uh, break light into the darkness that is Kylo Ren and try to rid him of it. And then the whole scene goes through. And then right as uh, Kylo Ren is about to stab Solo, the sun goes away. It's completely dark. There is no light that is breaking Kylo Ren. He is going to be evil. That is what he's going to be. And then he kills Harrison Ford on Solo. And when he falls, he falls into the light. And Kylo Ren is left standing in the darkness. And that was a very powerful scene. Very great, or a really great use of lighting to tell the story. Not necessarily... Uh, and tell the story behind the words that even though that we get the emotion and Adam Driver is such a great actor in this role of Kylo Ren and a lot of people are like oh why can't we just get somebody that's better looking because you won't get that um, act the acting you won't get the passion of this character like you would if you had some or like an Adam Driver in this role um and going on to Kylo Ren and the Ray thing or Ray being a Mary Sue, so to speak, is what a lot of people call her. And yeah, I can see it. She doesn't have any force training yet. She uses force mind control. She backs uh, Kylo Ren's force mind manipulation thing that he was doing back on himself. But with what we've seen in episodes 8 and episodes 9 of their force connected through the mind and how it has evolved, I believe that even though it is kind of stated that Snoke is the one that started I believe the seeds were planted in that moment in that little torture cell before it because Kylo Ren says don't worry I feel it too so I'm get like there could have been so many things that that could have been talking on but I believe that that was him feeling the connection between the two and it's so powerful and this is a really kind of way way far out there no basis there's nothing supporting this this is just me just trying to mind candon this end of existence but I think that when that was going on Ray kind of used that little bridge that was like the little seeds of the bridge to tap into Kylo Ren's thoughts and his memories and learn little bits of how to use the force through that moment we've already seen that she's kind of force sensitive a little bit here and there you know the, the lightsaber calling to her she grabs it she sees that force vision and all that good stuff so why not be able to put that into existence why not think of that in that manner. Uh, I do think that that would be a more powerful way of starting that tale of The Last Jedi. Um, spoiler alert again for episode 9. If you haven't seen it, I'll wait. 
welcome back. Uh, thank you for coming back after watching Rise of Skywalker. But I think that J.J. Abrams did have a plan, and at the beginning, Rey was supposed to be a Palpatine. Uh, not like, because once she kind of looks like Ian McDermott and a little bit, not a lot. You can kind of see the features like the jawline and stuff like that. But the way that she was fighting against Kylo Ren at the end of it, uh, she was kind of using the way he was fighting in episode three with the lightsaber and a lot of like the force stabs and the weird out of control type of slashes kind of uh, thing. So I do see that that was the seeds were planted. It's just Ryan Johnson didn't pick up that ball like he was probably supposed to. Disney did not have a, a plan. Uh, there was, was never a plan for this trilogy. They were just saying, all right, we're going to bring it in a new director. This is where you've got to go from here to here and then go. And and so I do believe that J.J. Abrams, I believe, has even stated that he did have plans for something of this nature, of her being a somebody. And we just didn't know who it was. Everybody was speculating and thinking on who it could be and everything like that. Like, even between... Uh, when a... Uh, before The Last Jedi came out, I'm saying if she loses her right arm, she's a, she's a Skywalker through and through, no matter what. Every Skywalker in the second movie has lost a, their right arm or hand. So, I said that at that time, and then it turned out to be false. Um, but, but, going back to like lighting and stuff like that, there was a lot of stuff going on in that final battle that uh, not a lot of people might have picked up on as far as the storytelling and the conflict with any themselves. Uh, a lot of people were like, how does Rey, with no force training, no lightsaber training, fend off somebody like Kylo Ren? Kylo Ren in that moment wasn't trying to kill her, wasn't trying to maim her or hurt her. He was just trying to subdue her enough so she can see that, hey, I need training. He is the only one that can train me. Come with him, go with him kind of thing. And then whenever he, he even says it whenever they're back on that cliff. And you see that excellent color, uh, like, just the coloring of the lightsaber and the the red and the blue lightsabers clashing on each other and I love that lighting I just I don't know what it is it just it gets me smiling and I love that just the colors of that how vibrant they are but even then he's like you need a teacher you're strong but let, I can show you the ways of the force and him saying the force kind of gets her to tap into oh snap I can use the force so she recedes back and he's just thrown off guard from that point forward because she's tapping into the force the very little bit that she knows how to use at that time and that throws him off so she doesn't necessarily best him and then again people are like well then how does Fade or Finn beat him he, one he didn't beat him but how did he stand his own he stands his own because Finn was or Kylo was touring with him and remember during this battle uh, Chewie had already shot Kylo Ren in the, in the abdomen and with a blaster that has been shown to throw people across corridors and long corridors and, th and stuff like that. But he stood and he took that and all he did was drop to his knees and was hurting. So he was using the force on himself to keep him not uh, giving in to that pain and helping him go on to be able to finish this fight. So that's what I think that that was going on. So people like to discount that like that isn't a big part of this, this moment. He is injured. He is very badly injured in the stomach so most of his force energy is going into that and his range of motion is very limited because of this but he's still pressing on into this fight and so whenever he's fighting Finn he's just touring with him he's just like I'm gonna have fun until Ray wakes up because I'm not trying to kill her and I need her to see something um, kind of thing and that's where I'll leave it I guess because it's not really much to touch on. I like this movie. It, this is probably the reason I don't feel connected to episode 4 anymore because I feel like this is a better telling of that same narrative but in a new way. Uh, I still like episode 4 but not as much as I like the telling of this tale like episode 7. Um, but that's just me. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got four more to go. I know I said four more last time, but I forgot I was doing another video, so I got four more videos. I got episode eight, nine, recap of this trilogy, and then a recap of the entire Star Wars saga, all which will be published on YouTube today, so you ain't got to wait much longer. I've done this for about a week, and I love Star Wars, <laughs> but not this much Star Wars. 
And plus, I got classwork I got to start focusing in on. So, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that you actually watch all these videos and then discuss with me why you think that I'm either not giving an accurate retelling or if I'm just reaching in some places. I'll catch you in a little bit.